Did you learn anything new last night, BJ, watching the first two episodes? Well, it's, um, you know, Rich, it's, you know, as I was, I was sharing this with my wife last night, it's always weird. I've always felt uncomfortable watching myself on television, right? Like an a, a old game would come on, and I'll just walk out of the room. This is really weird to watch because, you know, you, you, you knew the stories, and to watch it and know where, what's coming up next, hmm. it's a, it's kind of it's it's kind of weird to watch, right? It's kind of eerie a little bit, and uh, but it was fun, right, to revisit because you're seeing the reaction of so many people who didn't know these stories, and especially uh, the youth today. So. Um, you know, it's been interesting to watch the reactions. Well, obviously, again, you were not part of the last dance. As a matter of fact, I mean, uh, in in what by that I mean the final uh, three P to the Bulls. But you were. Mm-hmm. We did see. We did catch you last night hugging Michael uh, after a Warriors game because you were on the Warriors at the time. We did. Uh, we did kind of spot you uh, doing that last night. But I guess I will just start here uh, with this question that a lot of people are going to have throughout the ten episodes. Why did this team? get broken up why bj well you know you know rich um when you play sports you and you play and you win you know one of the things that i think you always have known and what i learned very quickly when i came in this league is rich when it ends it always ends bad Hmm. always and I learned that watching the Pistons. When the Pistons run ended, it ended bad. When the Lakers living out here in L.A. now, when the Lakers run ended with Shaq and Kobe, it just ended bad. And, you know, you can look now at the Patriots, you know, with with Brady. When it ends, it always ends bad. It's never a right time. It's never a wrong time. But you know it's going to end. So um, I think it was Pat Riley or someone, you know, said it best, you know, the ego. To me, is going to end every. It's going to end every run, and it's just a matter of when it's going to happen, not if it's going to happen. And that's just human. That's human. That's human behavior, and it's human behavior at its highest moment. And um, you know, watching the Bulls, you know, I learned, you know, on the job, you know, that the greatest opponent, the greatest opponent that I faced in sports was success and failure. How are you going to deal with it? And what you're seeing here, you know, in the first two episodes anyway, you see, you know, how challenging it is to not do it just individually, but collectively as a group so that you can continue to get to the end result, right? And the end result in sports is winning and ultimately winning the championship. So, um, you know, that's just the way it is. That's a part of the game. That's why, you know, I found it challenging is how could you get these other 11 people and get us all on the same page where something was going to unite us and find us a way to live outside of ourselves, right? Well, it's, um, it seemed it seemed to me, Jay, from what I challenge. yeah, of course. And it seemed to me last night, um, seeing how Jordan chafed at a minutes restriction in his second year, chafed coming off the floor with seconds to go because he had hit his minutes restriction, that that was something that soured him on Bulls management, and it never changed. Did you see that when you first arrived in Chicago? Well, you know, Rich, uh, you know, that was one of the eye-opening experiences that I experienced. If I can just, you know, just share that. Um, When I came into the league, you know, I was was this happy-go-lucky kid, right? Um, I was living out my dream. Um, But what I quickly found out, that it was a job. And more importantly, it was a business. And um, I struggled with that when I first came in the NBA because I was like – well, someone forgot to tell me that this was a business, right? <laughs> if I didn't make this shot here, they were going to find someone and get someone who could make that shot. It was, you know, it just is what it is. And I think Michael's understanding of the business, I mean, he saw it firsthand. And I think that had a great impression. And every player that plays professional sports, they come up, they, they're faced with that because we think of sports – you know, we have such fond memories of sports and competition and winning and sportsmanship and all of those things. And you suddenly find out that professional sports is a business and it's a business through and through. You can't deny it. And you got to figure out how to deal with it. And my my way to deal with this was I made a commitment. I can remember when I was a young player, like in my first or second year, I said, look, I'm here. I got a job to do. 
but I'm gonna I'm not gonna allow anyone or anyone in the organization or anyone in this league steal my joy because I I wanted to always remember what it felt like and what I dreamed about uh, doing, which was playing in the NBA someday. So um, that, that was tough to watch because every player goes through that, and you saw Michael go through it and look at face to face and. I just think that was his moment to understand of what he was really into, right? He was a basketball player, but he also understood the business to such a degree that I think allowed him to achieve success beyond anyone's wildest imagination because at the time, no one wasn't building teams around a 6'6'2 guard, and that was a challenge in and of itself. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.